Hi everyone, I'm Tully, this is Farrell and we are bored of it and welcome to our Buyer's Guide for Scythe. Have you heard about Scythe and want to know what the deal is? Or perhaps you already own Scythe and you want to know a bit more about the expansions and whether they'd be worth it for you? Well, we're here to help. We'll firstly start by covering a bit about what Scythe is, then move on to how it plays and things you need to know. And then finally, we'll cover the other content that's available for Scythe, like alternative boards and the expansions. In our bias guides, we like to keep things factual so there's no bias, and we're going to do that. But if you do want our opinion, that will be the very last section of this video. And on top of that, we have timestamped these sections. So say if you only want to know about the expansions, feel free to jump to that. But let's begin with what is Scythe. Scythe is a board game for 1-5 to five players, which was first published in 2016. It was originally a Kickstarter game, where it did very well, raising nearly $2 million, which was provided by over 15,000 backers. However, since then, the publisher, Stone My Games, has decided to release directly to retail. They've gone away from Kickstarter. So that is where you'll now find Scythe, and it is doing very well, constantly in print and constantly selling. Scythe was designed by Jamie Stegmeier, and the world was based on art from Jakob Brzezowski, who also does the art for the game. Scythe is set in an alternate 1920s Europe, still recovering from the destruction and devastation of the Great War. But as the memories of war fade, the allure of advanced weaponry in the abandoned city-state known as the Factory means that nations are going to strike out on a path to find profit, power and glory. In Scythe, players will play as one of the five available factions, Rusvia, Crimea, Polania, Nordics and Saxony. At its core, Scythe is an engine building game. You will start the game with both your faction mat and your player board filled with all kinds of things like cute wooden buildings and towering plastic mechs. What you want to do is get as much stuff off of your player boards and onto the main board as possible, because the more pieces you remove, the more options, powers and actions that you have available to you. This gives the game an arc because the players will get more powerful as the game goes on and cover more of the board. In terms of what's on the board, the workers will produce resources, the mechs can carry the workers and resources and they can also instigate combat. Your character can also instigate combat and they can interact with special spaces like the factory and encounter spaces which allow your character to go off on an adventure and gain some rewards. However, Scythe is also an efficiency puzzle because the game will end when a player gets their sixth achievement star and the stars will typically make up a big chunk of a player's VP. Stars are often gained from clearing out various things on the player boards such as deploying all of the mechs or building all of the buildings. But there are other ways to gain stars such as winning combat, completing secret objectives and also maxing out various tracks. At the end of the game, the winner will be the person that has the most money, and the players gain money through their stars, controlled territory, any unused resources, building on certain spaces, and you'll also be gaining money throughout the game just from taking actions. In a more mechanical sense, each turn you'll pick a section of your player board to activate. Each section has a top and bottom row action. Some of the top row actions are free and will allow you to do things like move or produce resources whereas the bottom right actions require payment of a specific type of resource, but they do allow you to remove things from your player board, such as buildings or mechs. The crux of the game is figuring out an efficient way to be doing both a top and bottom row action most turns, which is difficult because you can't activate the same section for two turns in a row. So, one big mistake some people tend to make when they look at the box of Scythe is to think that it's a classic 4x fighty combat driven territory control game, particularly because of the mechs, but it's not that at all. You can easily go an entire game of Scythe having no combat at all because it has more of a Cold War vibe. The threat of a combat is actually more powerful often than the combat itself because to do the combat, you have to spend power from a track and spend combat cards. However, by spending that power, you might be making it harder for yourself to produce resources, 
you'll leave yourself weaker and make it easier for another player to jump in and get an easy combat star from you. And it might prevent you from maxing out the power track and getting an all important achievement star. So if you just want to run around fighting everything in sight, then you'll likely come in dead last. Yeah, and Scythe is a engine building efficiency puzzle with one of the main aims to is to maximize the randomized combination of your player board and your faction map and get the most out of that. And it's very Euro-esque, but it does have some elements of luck and it has some combat. But you should know because of the aforementioned Uranus, there's people who are gonna find this much drier than they were expecting it to be, just based on the look of the box and the mechs and the kind of warriors. Yeah. So who is it for? Well, if you like being given a puzzle to solve or you like having to make do with what you're given and make the most out of it, then it's gonna be for you. If you like Euros, uh, but you want something more exciting, then Scythe is definitely that, uh, especially as as combat. And the combat's gonna to appeal to people who prefer it to be more tactical rather than completely luck-based or dice chucking. So all those things are things, if you enjoy, you'll enjoy Scythe. Well, we've already covered the base game of Scythe in pretty good detail, but beyond that, there are three main expansions and a bunch of kind of optional extras you can buy for Scythe. The first expansion is Invaders from Afar, which adds two new factions, Tagawa and Albion. It also means that you can now play Scythe with up to seven players. And these factions' powers are based around tokens and laying them on the board. Tagawa will be laying traps, which do negative things to players who go on that space and spring them, whereas Albion will be laying flags, and these make their territories worth more in the end game scoring. The second expansion is the Wind Gambit expansion, which adds some really awesome looking airships to the mix, and these you can use to ferry uh, goods, resources, and workers. On top of that, You'll randomize tiles, uh, two of them for each game, and one will be kind of aggression or combat focused, and the other will be general gameplay focused. And these will give the airships special powers each game. On top of that, you have some new end game tiles, which will change up how the game ends, or maybe what happens after the game ends, such as the factory and every space around it exploding and sending people back to uh, their home bases. Pretty wild. These tiles are a great way to shake up your games of Scythe if you've played a bunch of them. Now, the third and the biggest expansion is Scythe, The Rise of Fenris. And this essentially gives you a campaign of Scythe, i.e. turning Scythe into a pseudo legacy game, but one that can be reset at will. Now, we won't say too much about this because massive spoilers, but what we will say is there are plenty of great surprises in this box and it will give you a lot of different ways to play Scythe due to the kind of modular content and gameplay content you'll unlock as you play. Now, if you want to know more, go to the end of the video when we give our opinions and we'll give you our opinions on the campaign. And then you have all the little extras you can buy. You could get a board extension to make a giant board or you could buy a modular board, which will mix up where the factions start in terms of their home base or you could use that modular board to make the game tighter at lower play counts. Then you have metal coins, metal mechs, realistic resources, a neoprene play map. You have a completely bound rule book of everything Scythe, rules for all the expansions in one place. You have uh, extra encounter cards, you have promo cards, and finally a, a big old legendary box to store it all in. Luckily, uh, Stone My Games on their website has a list of all of this stuff and where to buy it. So we're going to link that down below if you're interested. So, as we said, this is going to be the only part of the video where we share our actual opinions. So if you don't want to be influenced by that, then look away now. Firstly, Scythe is our favourite game and it's the favourite game of many of our friends too. 
We will straight up admit, though, that a lot of that might be down to a touch of nostalgia mm -hmm. because it's the first modern board game that we played where we really thought, wow, this is how much fun you can have playing board games. And it's the one that got us deep into the hobby. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we've done this, been doing this channel for a while now and we've played hundreds of other games and we still love Scythe just as much. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah. But it is important to remember what we said in the things you need to know section about what this game is about and whether that appeals to you. Yeah, so moving on to all the other content and what we think about that, I'm going to start with the expansions and the Invaders from Afar expansion is a bit of a miss for us. It's a bit of a letdown, uh, mainly in that you would think that, you know, you love Scythe, you want more Scythe, it's more factions, but the factions are they're the least interesting out of any of the factions in the Scytheverse. They're the least fun to play as. They're the most difficult to play as. Um, we always groan, don't we? Yeah. Whenever we get that. Exactly. Because <laughs> we always randomize it and just whoever gets it, you're like, okay, you're probably not winning then. You're <laughs> out. So, so yeah. So that's, that's the thing. And um, the thing is, we love Scythe so much that I don't think we wouldn't have it but we wouldn't recommend it particularly. Then you move on to the Wind Gambit. This is a little more interesting. However, it's still not quite perfect. It's not quite an essential expansion. And for us, this is because in Scythe, you already have struggles with limited movement. You have a lot of things you want to move. You want to move a lot of spaces, but you're always quite limited. And this just adds another thing to kind of use up your movements. So it often gets ignored because it's something that's added in. Uh, and there's also a direct correlation between how much they're used in a game, uh, the, the airships, and what airship tiles are in play. Because some are just more interesting than others, some are like really finicky and people can't be bothered to mm -hmm. make it work together, because uh, it would mean it's an efficiency puzzle and it would mean like doing something else to get it in this position. Yeah. So that's another issue as well. But I will say is that they look awesome. I really love them when they're on the board. I do like playing with them on occasion. But uh, the other thing is that this comes with these end game scoring tiles. Oh, not scoring tiles, just end game tiles that shake up how the game ends. And these are really good if you're like us and you've played Scythe dozens of times because it just makes it a bit novel, have some new experience. So it's not, you know, this one, it's on the edge. You get it, you cannot get it, but we wouldn't say it's necessary. And then we have the Rise of Fenris, which in our opinion is an absolute must buy. It's a really brilliant campaign, so much so that we've played repeatedly and we still have the urge to play again. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Plus, it's really extra special the first time you play it through because of all of the secrets held within. What's also really cool is that you can take any element that you like from Rise of Femris and play with base scythe in the form of modular content. I think what we also particularly like is it strikes a really great balance between short term and longer term strategy because the player who wins the individual games throughout the campaign isn't necessarily the one who will win the overall campaign. No, that's true, right? <laughs> Anecdotal. Anecdotal, because usually I would say I win Scythe most out of anyone on average. Yeah. And in the campaign, because I deep dive into the campaign objectives, I often actually usually lose a lot of the games in the campaign. Yeah. Because I'm so focused on messing with the systems that have just been put in front of me. I think you've actually won the most campaign games. Individual but games. But that's not how you work out who wins. It's about meeting like objectives. And yeah. So exactly. It's uh, and like it's kind of playing the long game, and usually I just come out like way ahead at the end yeah. because I've been like nailing all these objectives. Exactly. So you've really got to strike a sweet balance mm. between the two. Like I think if you didn't win any individual games, you probably wouldn't win the campaign. Yeah. But yeah. you've got to no, figure out like sure. when to take the hit. So. That is just really cool and it makes things extra spicy. Yeah, so definitely recommend that. Moving on to all the little stuff. We don't have it all, but obviously we'll talk about what we do have. Uh, so the board extension that makes it a giant board, we really enjoy that, but you should know that it's a real table hog. Uh, we struggle to play with four players if we're using that, but Usually the only time we have any problem with table space is if we're playing something like Twilight Imperium or Eclipse. 
So that kind of attests to how much space it does take up. With the modular board, it's great if you are sick of starting in the same faction positions or if you want to make a two or three play game tighter. Uh, the extra encounter cards, which you can see at the front down here, these are a bit hit and miss. Uh, I will say that we added them in and we've never taken them out. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they're interesting, but a lot of them are very situational, uh, the ones that you add in. So we do often miss just having the classic ones. And it's, it's just that if you only get one or two encounter cards in a game of Scythe, and you know your very first one is one of these really finicky uh some of them are quite extreme yeah aren't they? i think that's why the situation yeah, is it yeah exactly. really good or just completely useless and very extreme yeah that's very true so then you kind of struggle and that can have a real knock-on effect for the rest of your game uh so that's the only thing so probably recommend it if you really enjoy the counters but just be wary that they're not all perfect yeah um then we also have realistic resource tokens, which were kindly provided to us by Top Shelf Gamer, and we really love those. Um, but obviously, being a cosmetic item, if you want them, that's up to you. And the same for the other cosmetic items we don't have, like metal mechs or metal coins, things like that. You know, you. I think, personally for me, and I think probably for you, I really like every aspect of science design, from the mechs, to the tokens that come with it too. So I personally don't think you need to upgrade it that much, but those options are there if you want it. And obviously, you know, your choice. Yeah. But yeah, so I think that's That's, that's everything, yeah. So that was our buyer's guide for Scythe and all of the content. Really hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up if this was helpful and please feel absolutely free to ask us any questions about anything we've yeah. said or any of the content down in the comments. We'll happily talk about Scythe all day long. Yeah. And please subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.